The People's Republic of China, known as China for short, is a developed Far East country. This state, which is one of the largest countries in Asia, it is home to 1.4 billion people in direct proportion to its surface area. This number is truly extraordinary for a country. Of course, being overpopulated has advantages for China, but it also has a negative effect. For example, nearly 100 million people are trying to make a living by spending just one dollar a day, the overpopulation reduces job opportunities and negatively affects the earnings of employees. At the same time, China is the country of origin of the COVID-19 pandemic epidemic, which has been going on for more than two years. This epidemic, which originated from the animal markets here, still could not be finished despite all the precautions, and moreover, it continues to breed with its various variants. In this process, thousands of people from almost every country in the world died, and there is still no definitive roadmap for how the epidemic can end. People are now catching the virus as if they are getting the flu, and the restrictions are being relaxed day by day. The good thing is that people are now getting through this epidemic lightly. I think avoiding the virus will become impossible at some point. And all societies will be tried to gain herd immunity. On the other hand, Chinese is mostly spoken in this crowded country. Today, we can say that it is the most spoken language in the world with 1.3 billion people. If we compare it with the world population, we can say that one out of every five people can speak Chinese. The country has a deep-rooted and written history of approximately 5,000 years. Inventions such as paper, gunpowder, compass and printing, which form the foundations of today, carry the traces of this civilization without exception. In this sense, they occupy a great place in human history. In addition, they fought many times with the Turkish states in Central Asia and inflicted great oppression on our ancestors. For example, if you look at the history of the Gate Turks, our ancestors had tough struggles with the Chinese. You will witness that they are fighting for their freedom at the cost of their lives. If we leave history aside and talk about today's China, there are many things to be said. For example, a person who has completed a university in China is not offered a minimum wage, university. Graduates earn more than the minimum wage, in other words, I can say that there are almost no university graduates receiving minimum wage. If you are a university graduate, it does not take decades to get promoted from the company you work for. You can have an excellent career in China in less time than you think, you can achieve the life of your dreams within a few years. The minimum wage varies by state, although the number of workers working for the minimum wage is high. There is such an opportunity, for example, you went to China to work in a factory, those factories cover your food expenses, lodging expenses for accommodation and your expenses such as internet. In other words, even if there is cheap labor, it is up to the workers to work. On the other hand, if you intend to go to China for educational purposes, this will be the right decision. Chinese is one of the most difficult languages in the world, so few people know it, it takes a long time to learn and requires extra attention. Therefore, no matter where you live in the world, if you know Chinese, you will definitely not go hungry. Being one of the top three economies in the world, China has a huge industrial network and almost every national company works with Chinese companies. For this reason, there is a need for people who speak Chinese in order to run the communication line between companies. Let me also say that houses in China are smaller than you. Think, if you are currently staying in 11 flats, do not complain that my house is too small. Because small apartments are being built in skyscraper style apartments in order to fit 1.5 billion people in China into the country. For example, people live in apartments of 30 to 35 square meters. Especially university students rent tiny apartments that are ultra small for us. The worst part is that in cities like Beijing and Shanghai, the rents of these capsule apartments are around half the minimum wage however, since people generally earn more than the minimum wage, those living in big cities do not have a living problem. In smaller cities, the quality of life is considerably lower than in metropolitan cities, as people earn much less. Income inequalities are high in China and millions of people live in slums in poor areas. Despite this cost, 
The Chinese economy is one of the fastest growing superpowers in the world. Many giant brands of the world set up their factories in this country and make great contributions to the Chinese economy. If such a populous country had not developed and remained backward, it would have been a real disaster for the people of that place. Okay, the busy manpower makes a great contribution to the country's economy, but this is not always a good sign. For example, let's consider transportation. Although China has developed sufficiently in transportation since it has a great crowd of people, it is quite possible to experience confluence in public transportation. People enter and go out while riding and leaving. When you get on the subway or bus, I can usually claim that you will go to your destination. It is not possible to talk about fresh air in a country with so many people and industrialization. Unfortunately, the air quality is very low in China. If you plan to stay there for many years, you will definitely see the effects of air pollution on your health at the end of 8 to 10 years. You will most likely develop infections in your lungs and respiratory tract. On the other hand, Chinese people, unlike us, do not usually live with their families. After graduating from university, instead of staying in the region where their families live, they find jobs in other cities and lead a life on their own. Also, Life in this country moves incredibly fast for everyone, regardless of whether they are men or women. Almost everyone is in contact with the outside world, and they are working. Since almost everyone in the family works, no one bothers to prepare breakfast when they wake up in the morning. People get their fill from shops, selling ready-made breakfast and peddlers on the way to work. Since lunch is already eaten, people can only eat at home in the evenings especially people who come from abroad and whose mother tongue is English meet their food and beverage needs completely from outside. Because American or British looking men can easily find jobs in Chinese companies with very good salaries if they speak English well. Chinese employers see foreign faces as truly valuable and qualified. Even Chinese women are very friendly towards Western men. That is because Chinese men make more money than foreigners and extremely annoyed by the fact that Chinese women find foreigners attractive. In terms of food, there are various dishes that are visually incompatible with our meals. Let's say you get used to their food by eating noodle-like things. This time, something else catches your attention. The Chinese smack their mouth incredibly when they eat, and this can make you uncomfortable. Eating food with a smack, especially in restaurants, gives a message to the chef of that business that the food is appreciated. You can also see that they often spit on the ground while walking on the street. While doing this, there is no sign of embarrassment on their faces in any way. Moreover, women often spit on the ground. Actually, spitting is a necessity for those living in China. What's the matter, you can say? Since air pollution is excessive, dust can get into people's mouths, which brings needs such as spitting and coughing. In Beijing, the capital of China, it is said that breathing for a day is equivalent to smoking a pack of cigarettes. In terms of belief, the Chinese mostly prefer Buddhism. In addition, nearly 700 million Chinese people do not consider themselves close to any religion. Moreover, the Chinese do not like to talk about politics and religion. They are just as afraid of dying anyway, and they often avoid topics that evoke death. There are even taboo beliefs about this situation. They do not present watches to their loved ones. Because the clock evokes time and therefore death. Again, they absolutely avoid giving flowers, especially daisies, because the daisy is also taken to the dead. In addition, you can hardly see the number for in elevators and apartments. Because the number for also reminds them of death. That's all I have to say about China for now. See you in the next video. Bye.